Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is gonna be my March wrap-up where I read a couple of really phenomenal books. I cried over two different books this month. Just fascinating and wonderful writing for a couple of them. And then <laughs> I read a few I didn't love, but I know they're kind of generally beloved right now. And so I'm I'm intrigued to hear how all of you felt about the books I'm going to discuss. Um, but more than that, I'm interested to hear what your reading month was like, what did you read in March, and what was the best book you read in March, as well as what was the worst. If you feel like sharing, please share. Also, these are holes in my shirt, not toothpaste, so there you go. <laughs> Okay, so those are my questions of the video, but I'd also just like to say that if you missed my announcement video, I did come out with some new earrings with Ana Luisa. They're these really cool pearl drop earrings that were inspired by books like Circe, Song of Achilles, A Thousand Ships, Ariadne, and Silence of the Girls. So I was inspired to make these earrings based off some Greek retellings and if you would like a pair, I'm gonna leave them linked down in the description box. So feel free to pick up a pair if you'd like. Um, I saw some reviews that are very, very sweet. I actually saw a review that said, these earrings are stunning. Get it? <laughs> that's because that's what I say all the time. So if that was you, um, I saw the review and I'm very, very, very thankful. Um, Anyway, so yeah, if you'd like a pair, I'll leave them linked down below, but let's get into these reads and we're gonna start. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna present you with a book I really loved and then a book that I didn't love as much as I was hoping and then a book that I loved, you know, and go like that, at least for the first five. And then um, just cause I had such polarizing thoughts on each of them um, and then we will just finish it up with some books, so. Okay, so let's begin with one of the high points of the month, one of the best books I read this month, as well as the year. One of the best books I've read this year was Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. This is a memoir, and Michelle Zahner is the lead singer of Japanese Breakfast, which is a band, which I had never listened to before, and now that I have, Holy shit, those are some groovy tunes, seriously, like really fun and just, oh, her vocals are amazing. So anyway, I picked up the book, very excited, very intrigued, um, especially since I've seen it all over the internet and it's a memoir, which was something I was particularly interested in. I wanna read way more memoirs this year. I think moving forward through the year, I'd like to read a memoir a month, so, Hopefully in my April wrap up, you'll hear me say like, and the monthly memoir went to, but anyway, I'm starting that now. And March's was Crying in H Mart and it was phenomenal, fantastic, spectacular in my opinion. Um, I've talked about this a couple times, but I'm always so intrigued with how an author decides to approach their own life story. So we have someone like Maggie O'Farrell with I Am, I Am, I Am, where she told the story of her life through her encounters with death. Then we have someone like Amy Poehler with Yes, Please, where she's basically approaching her memoir with a particular emphasis on her time in comedy and SNL specifically. Um, and then we have someone like Chanel Miller, who wrote Know My Name, one of my favorite books of 2021, who was approaching the story of her life through a very traumatic and horrible experience. But through her unfolding of that experience, you're also learning about her. So I have just always been fascinated with how someone decides to tell the story of their life. And this book <laughs> did it phenomenally and so uniquely. So basically in the memoir, Michelle is talking about her relationship with her mom because her mom has recently passed away. Um, she passed away in 2014, I believe. And so she's discussing her relationship with her mom, but also her relationship with her mom and food because that was one of their places that they could bond. So this book made me sob 
I cried on the airplane and usually don't love doing that, but I <laughs> couldn't help myself. Um, and then also my mouth was watering the entire time because the descriptions of food were phenomenal. So I just felt like this book did such incredible things with writing and with description and with the just it was so emotionally charged because you know that her mom has passed away and you're watching her tell stories of her mom um and it was just beautiful it's a memoir that I feel like I'll return to many times in my life because of how well done it was and I just think it's a great reminder of like embracing those that you love when you have them so I thought it was fantastic and uh, the audiobook was also fantastic. So loved it. It was a great book in March. All right, <laughs> now let's pivot to a disappointment. And I'm not saying that this book is bad. It just, I really enjoyed the first half and then didn't enjoy the end very much. So if you love this book, no shame in your game. I completely understand. It's really fun. Um, but I'll explain, you know what, just get to it a while, just show the book and then explain yourself after. Okay, so that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. This was my first ever Colleen Hoover. I've never read any of, any of her other books, any of her other romances, because that's usually the genre that she's in. But from my understanding, not really rom-com, more dramatic romances. So this was my first Colleen Hoover. And I think that if I had read her other books, this could have been awesome as like a, cause I believe this is her first official like thriller mystery. At least that's what her acknowledgements implied. Um, so I think that if I had read her other books and then read this, I would be like, wow, she does romance so well and thrillers so well. But I wasn't comparing this to her other books. I was comparing this to other thrillers. So I think that might be why I didn't love it as much as I was expecting to. Um, but let me talk about the synopsis and then I'll discuss <laughs> the other things. Um, so Verity is basically about this woman named Lowen, who's this author that's written a couple of books that aren't super popular, but she's a published author and she's proud of that. Um, and then she is asked to be the new co-writer of a series for another famous author. Basically this famous author, Verity, has gotten into a really bad car accident and can't finish her own book series. So Lowen is hired to finish her book series for her, which I just thought was a really cool concept. Like having an author come in and finish a series was really cool. Um, and when Lowen arrives at the house to do some research for the series, she happens upon Verity's memoir, at least the manuscript for her memoir, and she starts to unravel some really sinister things around the family and around Verity herself. So um, that's all I'll say about the synopsis. But that alone, super interesting. Like I love the idea of this kind of co-authored book and series and this kind of memoir that's telling the truth of a life and kind of showing an uglier side to things. Very intriguing. Overall, for a thriller to really work for me, number one, I have to really care about the main character. I want that person to be safe. I want that person to be okay and happy and thrive. Um, and I worry about them. And you're definitely worried in the sense of the story structure, but I didn't feel very connected to any of the characters in the book. And so it was more of me just trying to solve this puzzle and less of me feeling that emotional charge of like what's going to happen next. The other thing is that I have never written a thriller and I don't think I ever will because I'm not equipped for it. Let me make that clear. <laughs> I don't think that I am like this super clever writer in any capacity. But because I've read so many thrillers, I had guessed the ending of this book and I was wrong. However, I feel like the ending I guessed was a lot creepier than what actually happened. So the twist is cool and it's interesting, but because I had thought of this like really sinister twist and like just like catch all moment of like, oh my God, how did that happen? Because I thought of something creepier than what evidently happened, I 
just it felt a little lukewarm by the end. But I think that I was just measuring this against scarier books and so the ending didn't hit as hard as I thought it was going to. And that's what I gotta say. Okay. <laughs> All right, the next major smashing hit of March's Reads was a book that I've already talked a lot about, so I'm gonna keep this brief, but that was Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I was super intimidated about this book. Um, and then I filmed a whole rating vlog and you can go and see my reaction, but I fucking loved this book. I loved it. I thought the writing was superb. I thought it was incredible. And I was intimidated. I was like, this is gonna be too historical. I don't really wanna read like a school book that's not for school. Um, and instead I was taken away on this harrowing, gut-wrenching, beautiful, promising book that was just fantastic in my opinion. I saw some comments on the reading vlog that were like, yeah, I liked it, it was just a little too slow, or the first 150 pages, it just didn't move fast enough. Totally get it, totally understand. I think having an audiobook for it really helped, and also I was reading it as a buddy read, so it kept me accountable to keep reading. Um, but if you're reading it and you're like, I'm not really seeing it, just keep going. <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> I'm a big proponent of DNFing books if you're not interested, but I feel like once you get past that kind of setup of the story, it gets really intriguing, really fun, and just phenomenal. So uh, basically this is a book surrounding Shakespeare, but it's not about Shakespeare, in my opinion. Um, it has more to do with Shakespeare's wife, Agnes, and his son, what is his son's name? Hamnet, oh my God. <laughs> It, literally the name of the book. Oh my god. Um, but uh, you're kind of watching how Shakespeare and Agnes met and then Agnes's role as the mother of the family and um, the children that she had. She had three children and uh, it's just it's wonderfully done. I talked about this in the reading vlog but um, just the the kind of duality between the folkloric elements of like mysticism and magic mixed with uh, the brutal descriptions of the bubonic plague and how that manifested itself in someone's body. Super overwhelming and uh, ultimately uh, really well done. So that's Hamnet. Okay, let's get into another, you know, not just not another favorite. <laughs> let's just say that. I did not hate this book. In fact, I thought it was pretty wonderful. Um, for most of it, and I thought that the writing was spectacular, but ultimately didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to. <laughs> and that was Matrix by Lauren Groff. Um, listen up. I talked about this book. It's one of the books that I picked up in Paris a couple weeks ago or last week. Um, you know, time flies when you're jet lagged. <laughs> anyway, um, so ultimately read the first half um, and thought it was exceptional. And actually the writing throughout the whole thing is exceptional, so that never falters. Writing is beautiful, uh, character development is super fun, the main character Marie is an exceptional lead character, super cool, and just the general challenge of the patriarchy within organized religion, very cool to read, ultimately very interesting. The problem I had was that the structure of this book and the pacing of this book was uh, hard for me to get into. So the first half was a breeze. Could totally track what was happening. Felt like I totally understood like where the book was going. But it kind of feels like the peak of the book is around the midway point. And then after that, it feels like just stories just kind of telling us what's going on. It doesn't really feel like there's a like an overall arc throughout the whole thing. It feels more like it peaks and then the rest of it kind of slowly, slowly fades away. We've got a long fade at the end of the book. So um, basically this is about a woman named Marie who is abandoned. This is like also early 
10, 15, so like a thousand years ago. Um, and Marie is abandoned, has no family, and the queen decides to make her the abbess of an abbey in a faraway land. And, uh, and at first she's like, don't know her, don't wanna be here, thanks, but no thanks. And then she decides that it's actually a great opportunity to really shine as a businesswoman and as just a strong woman in general. And so that part was super fun. I loved reading about Marie. I loved getting to know Marie. It was just that the second half felt like we had kind of gotten to our peak and then the rest was just kind of taking us for a spin, right? So I think that just if the structure felt like if the first half was stretched out through the whole book, I think I would have liked it a lot more in terms of structure. If you've read it, maybe you understand what I'm saying. If not, that's totally fine. I think it was just the pacing that threw me off. But ultimately, again, the book was, uh, or the writing was awesome, and Marie was awesome, and um, just talking about being a businesswoman of a nun was super cool. So that's Matrix. Okay, and then the last highlight of the month, and then I have a couple of others that I really liked, but this was a major shining point for the month of reading for me, and that was Hook, Line, and Sinker. This is a romance that I've been really excited to read ever since I read the first one in the series, which is called It Happened One Summer. This is the first book. This is the second book, and I... I guessed right with this one, okay? I talked about this in my 2022 romance TBR, but I was like, I didn't love the first book, but I think I'm gonna love the second book. And good God, I did. Oh my God. It was fun. It was flirty. It was steamy. And it was just super good. I just loved it as a romance. It was a great escape. It was one of those books that like, with a lot of these books, I really enjoyed them, but I was reading them at a normal pace of like, you know what, we're gonna get through them and it's gonna be great. But with this, it was like day, day and a half, I need to figure out what's gonna happen. So it was just one of those really cool books that like just pulled me in and wouldn't let me go. And I was begging it not to, cause I was in it. I like, oh my God, I just thought it was really fun. Um, basically this is about the younger sister of the first book. Um, and she is in the film industry and she kind of has this flirty thing going um, with this guy who lives in this small town. Um, and so they're like separated, they're like worlds apart. I mean, they're only states apart, but you know, just he lives in this small fishing village and she works in Hollywood. And uh, she has to find a shooting location for her movie that she's working on and she proposes this small town and uh, they meet again and uh, chaos ensues. So <laughs> it was pretty wonderful, I'm not gonna lie. And I, I really liked, um, we see this trope a lot in romances where like the guy is just this like commitment phobia, like, oh, I just, I can't settle down. I can't be with anyone. Um, and in this book, that's a similar trope that we see, but his explanation for why he is like that was refreshing. I just felt like it was a refreshing take on the trope of like, I'm a bad guy that like can't settle down. I felt like it introduced a new explanation or of, of why he is the way he is. So um, ultimately really rooted for it. Had some moments where my heart was a flutter and um, yeah, I thought it was great. And I, uh, if you've read the first one, I highly recommend the second. If you haven't read the first one, I think you have to read the first one because the overall story arc will make a lot of sense if you've read the first one and you just miss a lot of knowledge on the small town if you haven't read the first one. So if you have, pick it up. If you haven't, pick up the first one and then the second one, if you like romance. If you don't, then this is not the one for you. <laughs> but uh, yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, almost finished, folks. The next book was Loveless by Alice Oseman. This was my February book pick with my book club that I have with Elias and Joel. Um, someone had asked me on one of my latest videos, uh, if anyone can join our book club, you absolutely can. And we highly encourage you to do so. It's a fun time over there. Um, but we just, we have an Instagram and we have a Discord. It's like, there's no formal signups. It's not like this private thing. It's just this like public book club that we have. Um, and so I read Loveless at the beginning of March, which was when our 
book club discussion was happening and it was really great. So Loveless is about this woman named Georgia that goes to college and when she's in college she's realizing that although she's always loved romances, like reading them and watching them, she herself has never been interested in a romantic or sexual relationship. Um, and so through that uh, she's feeling a lot of shame and guilt and she's questioning herself and like just who she is in the world. Um, and then through college, she meets some people who um, just have a beautiful understanding of sexuality and through meeting them, she's able to figure out her own. It's a really sweet book. I think that it did really well in the universe of Alice Oseman that I've read. I've only ever read Radio Silence, but I felt like when I was reading both of them, I was like, yes, same author, same kind of timeline, um, because Radio Silence is the end of high school and uh, Loveless is first year of college. So I just really appreciate how Alice Oseman is able to capture that kind of like young, blossoming adult kind of mindset and the insecurities that come with that. So overall, I thought it was really good. All right, and then the final book that I read in March, at least that I finished in March, I did start Slaughterhouse-Five and Native Son. I just haven't finished them yet, so I don't know how they wrap up, but I'll talk about those in April or in my April wrap up. But the last book I read in March was Love at First Spite. I got to read this for an author interview with Anna E. Collins on Likewise, which was really, really fun. Um, but this is a really fun uh, workplace enemies to lovers romance, um, all in the home renovating business. So a little HGTV action, right? super fun. Um, but basically, our main character was cheated on recently. And the way that she seeks revenge is by buying the property next to his property and building a spite house. So building like an Airbnb for women to go to when they've been heartbroken to get out some sadness and heartache and frustration. So that concept's fun and she ends up hiring her coworker who she doesn't get along with, but she knows that he does good work. And so they work together on this project and chaos ensues. I think I already said that this video, but I'm saying it again because it's the truth. So <laughs> this was just, it was a fun little rom-com that I get to read. It was also a really quick read. So if you want a quick romance read, this one's really fun. Anyway, so that's Love at First Spite. And that is the end of this video, my friends. Again, let me know what your favorite book of the month was, um, what your least favorite book of the month was, and uh, what you are excited to read in April or just the year in general. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought. And um, yeah, I hope you liked this video. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one.